Yo what's up, it's someone that's someone, and welcome to a new series today. That is, Substances Explained. I may change that name in the future, if something better pops up. But it's exactly what it sounds like. We're going to be explaining and breaking down these substances. Getting into the chemistry, the pharmacology, the history, the effects you can expect, things like duration, route administration, combinations, basically anything you can think about a substance, this series is going to be an area where we explore these things. Now if you've been around, you know that sometimes I would break down substances after a report, so this series will take over that portion. Which the main reason for this is, I want the videos to be more focused and not so much packed within one video. I'll provide some pretty vital information sometimes about these substances, and I feel like a good portion of the audience is unaware that I'll even do this sometimes. So I feel like this series will help keep everything better organized and make everyone more aware of this. So let me know if you like this series idea, and I'll definitely keep them coming. And expect these videos not to be super long, and having the information be spread out. We'll cover and go into all different areas with these videos, but for some it may be more scientific based, and with others it may be more history based. It's really going to depend on the trip report the explanation video is paired with. Which this brings me to the start of today's video. To start this series off, I wanted to pick something that has always interested me, and that's Bromo Dragonfly. Now each author report, it has a lot to offer, by Apradavra off Eurowood, 4 years ago now. Crazy we've been doing this this long, and it's crazier to me we're technically making a follow up on this, but here we are. So this will be linked down below, so make sure to go check out this report first, as I might reference it. But to start off, Bromo Dragonfly is a psychedelic amphetamine phenothylamine that was synthesized in 1988 by Matthew Parker. It is a benzodiferin, which means it's fused with a benzene and two furan rings, which many benzofurans tend to be RCs. And Dragonfly is actually an analog to the psychedelic amphetamine DOB, which was synthesized by Alexander Shulgin. But I state this because if you actually look at the chemical structure of Bromo Dragonfly, you can see that the structure is somewhat shaped like an actual dragonfly, and that's what inspired the name. But let's get into how this substance will act within the brain and body, and what effects you might come to expect. So pharmacologically, there has been some research done in mice that has shown bromo dragonfly to have very strong binding affinities with psychedelic serotonin receptors, notably having strong activity with 5-HT2A, B, and C receptors. Comparably, this is noted to have around one third of the potency of LSD, or 300 times the potency of mescaline. Doses tend to sit around 100 micrograms, upwards to 400 micrograms. Possibly more, but it's advised not to go higher, because there are a lot of risks with it. You may have heard that this substance has caused some fatalities in the past, and not just because someone was freaking out and an accident occurred. What these are called are pharmacological fatalities. One thing to be aware of is that there are two different isomers of Bromo Dragonfly, with the R isomer being much more stronger than the S. There have been different batches noted in the past, especially based on the area and country. It can be a difference of, to where some have claimed, that some batches aren't active until you hit around 1mg of the substance. But accidentally do that with the R isomer, you're most likely going to have a rough trip. Besides this though, there is research indicating that Bromo Dragonfly may be inhibiting MAOA, which may indirectly inhibit the metabolism of 5-HT and dopamine. This activity here is thought to be the reason why this substance lasts so long. There are varied reports, but commonly most experiences will have effects at least for a day, while those who've gone higher and those who've overdosed show that the trick could possibly last up to 4 days. Which as far as I know at this time, this is probably the longest lasting psychedelic drug you can take from just a single dose. Correct me if I'm wrong, but not even the long-lasting DOX substances will last this long. And for obvious reasons, having a trip this long is most likely going to have an impact on your day-to-day -day life, especially considering the loss of sleep. And considered this is technically an amphetamine, we can most likely expect typical amphetamine side effects, like increased blood pressure, heart rate, appetite suppression, dehydration, change in body temp, and much more to be weary of. But there is one side effect that does seem to stick out strongly with Bromo Dragonfly, up to the point where it's led to amputation. And I'm talking about the effect of vasoconstriction, which is where your blood vessels become constricted. 
and stimulants themselves have shown to cause vasoconstriction, but it isn't clear exactly how Bremo Dragonfly is so severe. Some do speculate that it's an indirect effect caused by prolonged stimulation of adrenergic receptors. Then other overdose reports detail seizures, vomiting blood, kidney failure, liver failure, cardiac arrest, and possibly more. It hasn't been reported yet, but I'm sure dopamine is most likely involved because of its stimulant properties. So stimulant psychosis is probably another risk. So with all of that, it sounds like it can be one hell of an experience. And honestly, by the reports of it, it makes me think of the M-Bomb series. But more research is needed to really clarify what kind of psychedelic this is. And Burmo Dragonfly is also a substance that has been mislabeled in the past. And it's a reason why some of these overdoses even happened in the first place. There's been a case where it's been claimed to be 2CE, and where two people lost their lives and a total of eight were hospitalized. There's also a case where it's been sold as GHB and someone injected it, and this resulted in fatality also. But looking at the report this video was inspired by, I would guess that they ended up taking the S isomer because the user dosed 675 micrograms and didn't have a super strong trip. There was some light alcohol consumption, as well as cannabis and hash oil smoked, which did seem to enhance the effects as expected with a psychedelic. But not saying that this trip was light at all, he did note a lot of visuals, which seems to be common with this substance. But then if you look at his buddy, who took more than him and didn't feel anything, it really does show some variance with it and how you have to be careful. When his pug gave it to him, he wasn't sure if it was R or S isomer. And at that dose, it could have been a much different experience if it was R. But I think I'm gonna end this video here for today this first episode might be a little long, but I don't intend for these to be super long, just kind of like quick introductions and quick discussion points based on some reports. So if you like this, make sure to like and subscribe. I got some other content dropping besides reports and a story time coming up, so stay tuned. But it's been someone that's someone, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.